to our video on basically substitution, which is you're given a formula and you're given the input values, so the key values to put into the formula, and they want to know can you use those values to solve. So they give you the formula, nothing to memorize here, they give you the values, and essentially you're, you're plugging in those values into the formula to see what we get. Now, now this is actually a pretty straightforward type of process, and in this video we're going to talk about how to plug in, um, not too much about why these formulas work. Um, I prefer just to think about why the formulas make sense, but uh, this, is, this is good practice. So here we have in the first problem, Keisha will paint one rectangular wall of her bedroom. The wall measures 10 feet by 8 feet. What is the area of the wall that Keisha needs to paint? So um, here we have a rectangle, right? And it's, it's 10 feet by 8 feet. And we want to know the area. So 10 feet by, by 8 feet. What do we do? Well, we multiply 10 feet by 8 feet. Essentially, we're finding one row of 10 feet and then multiplying it by a height of 8 feet, and that'll give us the full area inside uh, that, oh, that we need to figure out what Keisha has to paint this wall. And the formula says it right here. But let's go over that so that if there is a formula we don't remember, uh, we can use this as a reference. A equals LXW. Well, that, what does that mean? Well, L, this is not a 1, careful, right? Uh, it could be 1 if the length was 1, but but that's not what we have here, right? That's an L for length. And we could choose either as the length and width. I'm going to choose uh, 8 feet as L. I'm going to write it in cursive so we don't think it's a, a 1. And then this is times, and then width, right? W for width. I'm going to let this equal my, my width. And of course, I hope you realize, well, maybe we don't, let's we'll talk about it. If we had an 8 by 10 foot wall, if we reversed it or turned it on its side so that so that this was the 8 feet and this was the 10 feet and we called 10 feet the length and 8 feet the width we would still have the same area so please don't don't worry about how you choose your length or width the area will always be the same so anyway 8 times 10 that's that's our formula and it gives us a which is the area so it's 80 80 square feet and again square feet because you're measuring how many square foots, how many one by one square foots will fit into this shape, right? There's 10 for each row, and then eight, 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 ten, ten 10 columns, right, of feet for, for eight rows. So 80 square feet will fit here, and H is our answer. In our next problem, we have a triangle, and they give us the formula. We were told Willard has a stained glass window with one triangular piece as shown below what is the area in square inches of the triangular piece now you see this dotted line right here it makes it look like we have two separate pieces this whole shape is the piece and here the formula is correct it's given as area equals one half of the base times the height or you can think of it as base times height over two that's how I like to think about it or we can do that in any combination or, or order. Essentially the idea is that if I had a, what's a rectangle, just like in the last problem, and I found that total the total area, how would I do that? I would I would take eight inches down here, the the width, times this is also what? This is the same as this height right here, so this would be six inches. So that would be our our length. And we would say, well the area of that rectangle is six by eight right which is 48 now you see 48 down here that's not our answer because this triangle right is half of the rectangle and that's why the formula is written the way it is if you look at these two yellow pieces here right this yellow piece right here is exactly the same as this yellow piece and this piece is the exact same as this piece right here so if these four pieces are right these two pairs are identical and all four of them make the rectangle, well, if I took half of those four pieces, I would have half of the shape. So to find this the area of this triangle, I would take the area of 48, divide it by 2, to get 24, right? And that's our answer. And to use the formula, instead of width and length, we say base and, and height. So the 8 would be what? That would be the, the base. So 8 times the height, which would be right here, 6. And 
and they give that right here on the triangle. It's the vertical height, right? Not this height here, if they give it to you. That's, just, that's the called the hypotenuse, which we might cover in other videos. So 8 times 6 over 2, which is 48 over 2, which means 48 divided by 2, which is still 24. And that's a pretty standard triangular problem. Here we have a circle with a radius of 18 inches. R is 18, right? If we had our circle, we could set that up pretty quickly. Here's a circle. There is my radius of 18 inches. And if I do this perfectly accurately, the radius comes from the center and hits the circle. Uh, what is the circumference of the circle in terms of pi? Well, one great fact, and this is starting to pop up, uh, around Pi Day is, is Tau, Tau Day. Well, what, is, what does that refer to? It refers to the, the amount of radiuses that actually wrap around the circle. And if we if I could draw this accurately, let's see, 2, 3, 4, 5, oh, it's terrible. Let's try to get this radius right here. Um, let me go back. Because if I draw this accurately, about, about 3 diameters go around the circle and every diameter is 2 radius. So this would be about 6 radii would go around the circle. 3, 4, a little bit more than that, 5, 6, and a little bit extra. So 6 radiuses wrap around the circle. So if this is our radius right here. To find the circumference, right, that's, that's the idea behind tau, which is 2 pi, right? Um, the idea being that, well, yes, the diameter wraps around the circle pi times, but the radius We'll go around it two pi times, or about six. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm, I'm digressing right here, but we'll make videos about ta tau and talk about its significance and relationship to pi, um, about why it make, might make life super easy in some calculations. Uh, but anyway, sorry about that. So the circumference formula, it's written right here. All right? And circumference is equal to two pi r. Why? Because well, there's two ways of looking at this. Um, so first of all, we have we have what? Well, it's about two pi radiuses that fit around. We just showed that, right? Two pi. Pi is about is a little bit bigger than three, so two pi would be about two times pi, which is about six, right? And then in this formula, it says about six radiuses wrap around the circumference, right? Because we have one, two, three, four, five, six radiuses. So the circumference, you, you would take the radius, whatever it is, 18, and then multiply it by 2 pi. Now, I would change the order around and take 18 times 2 first, right? We can change the order of multiplication. 18 times 2 is 36, and then we're not multiplying by pi, we're leaving it in terms of pi, so the answer is 36 pi. And another way of thinking about it that might be a little bit less wordy, because I think I was rambling here, that the diameter of a circle is the length that goes around, across, through the middle. Sorry, that's the diameter. So the diameter in this case is 36, right? And, and a circle is, has an amazing property, not just with the radiuses, but with diameters. If six radiuses wrap around a, the circumference of a circle, then half as many diameters will, right? Because the diameter is twice as long. So it's about three and a little bit more. Here's our 0.14 point a little bit, this little bit right here I'm trying to say is, ah, sorry, that little bit right there is about 0.1415, right? It's a little bit left over. So when you think of the circumference of a circle, you can think of it as the diameter, which is 36 times pi. That is what circumference is. Here's another problem. Um, notice it's also about a, uh, a piece of rectangular wood where the length is 8 feet and the width is one half of the length. So if the length is eight feet, the width is half of that. How do you find that? Well, you can multiply one half by eight, or take eight and divide it by two. And either way, we get the width as four feet. We, don't, we want to know what the area is. Now the formula they write is looks like something like this. Wow, handwriting's a little off. You see it right here. This is saying area is equal to length times width. They're just not writing the multiplication symbol. In algebra, if we have two variables next to each other, it's implying that we're multiplying the length and the width. So here the area would be 8 times 4, which is what? That's, that's 32. 
In this problem, Andy walks at a rate r of 4 miles per hour. So that's our rate. 4 miles per hour. What is the distance, so that's our unknown, that she walks in the time t of 3 hours? So t is time, and it's 3 hours. Now distance is, the formula is right here. It says d equals rt, which means distance equals the rate you're going times the amount of time you're traveling, which is how you naturally figure out how far you're going. Well, how fast am I going? Well, I'm going four miles per hour. And how long am I going for? Well, I'm going three hours. So every hour, I'm going to go right, four miles per hour. And you could think of this as four miles per hour times three hours. And that's going to equal 12 miles. In a sense, we're multiplying by h and dividing by h as well, which is hours. And we don't have to think about them because hours over hours is just one. So really, this is just 12 miles. And that's our answer, C. In this problem right here, we, we've got to figure out the, uh, the situation for Rachel. She's in her garden. She has a water barrel shaped like a cylinder. So a cylinder's a circle with a lateral surface and a circle at the base. The radius of the barrel is one foot. So the radius right here right, is one foot. And the height is four feet. The height is considered the, the distance between the two circles. Right? It's four feet. What is the volume in cubic feet of the water barrel? So here's the formula. V equals pi r squared h. So V, well, how do we deal with this? Well, r is the radius. So what does r squared mean? That means r times r, which for us is nice because r squared equals 1 times 1, which is just 1. So we have pi times 1 times the height of 4. 4 times 1 is just 4, so we have pi times 4. That's the volume. And we could change the order to make this more friendly. 4 times pi. That's called the commutative property when you switch the order and multiplication without switching the value. And you probably see this written just as 4 pi. And that means 4 times pi. But we don't want to evaluate it. Um, because it says right here, first of all, leave your answer in terms of pi. Wow, I circled right over that. Sorry. So we just leave it like this. right? That's how many pi's we have. We have 4 pi's, which is our answer A. In this last problem, we have another cylinder with the same formula. Pi times radius squared times height. And notice they just write it as pi r squared height. I put the multiplication symbols in there for myself. It's just easier to think about this problem. It also helps me remember that I can move these terms around if I want to. If I want to. That might help me. So here they, they, they labeled this diagram, but they don't tell us what they're giving us. Um, this is the height, again, because we're going from one circle to another. And this is the radius, right? The radius is just that length from the center of a circle to the edge of a circle. So we have pi times 4 squared, that's our radius squared, times our height, which is 10. And that's equal to what? Well, 4 squared, what does that mean? That means 4 times 4. So pi times 4 times 4, which is 16, times 10. Now, 16 times 10 is 160, right? Times pi, that's the same thing as 160 pi. Just switch that order. And there's our answer right there, G. All right, hope that helped. Now, we have many more videos on these shapes and about why they work. But um, this is, was just a procedural video. All right, thanks.